but that are scattered in different doctrines and philosophies. Read on. Verse 16. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Jump over to verse 10 and 1. Acts chapter 10 verse 1. So this is Paul what? Being commissioned by Christ to guess what? Wake up. Understand that guess what? You finna do my will now. So meaning what? When brothers and sisters get that call, it's not okay for you to hang up the phone on your hour shot, man. That's not cool, man. When he call you out of darkness into this light, it's not okay for you to stop putting in work in the truth, man. That stuff is not okay, man. And brothers and sisters will be judged for those things. That lets you know brothers and sisters are not doing one thing. They're not seeking out counsel. They're not applying the scriptures. And they're not praying. They're not fasting. Because we should be constantly being diligent in this walk, man. We know the scriptures. You're going into Luke chapter 9. Hey, you're not fit for the kingdom if you keep looking back, man. Read on up. The book of Acts chapter 10 verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea. And who? In Caesarea. Do any brother know where Caesarea is located? Like I say, we're going to learn geography. We're going to learn history in this thing. Brother Kirk, where do you think Caesarea is? Yes. It's a city in Jerusalem. A lot of times people think this is Caesarea in Rome or Italy or something. So they're literally thinking Cornelius is a white man. But no, that's why it's very important for brothers when y'all read, even for sisters when y'all reading, to guess what? Go into the geography. These things are very important that you'll be caught up out there. Read that again from the top. Acts 10 and 1. There was a certain man at Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. So they take that. They forget Caesarea and they just hop straight to Italian band, meaning this was an Israelite in the Roman army. Similar to what we got today. We got many Israelites in the American army. This is the same thing. Read on. Verse 2. A devout man. A what? A devout man. Meaning what? He's devoted and de devoted to what? Keeping God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Israel is the only nation that can keep God's laws, statutes, and commandments, man. That's what this means. Read on. A devout man. And one that feared God. And if you fear God, you keep his commandments. Read on. With all his house, which gave much alms to the people. And he gave alms to the people. Read on up. And prayed to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming in unto him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. Now we know the Most High God only hear the prayers of sin. Uh, don't hear the prayers of sinners, man. He not even listen to the other nations' prayers, man. Give me Second Ezra's right quick. Second Ezra's chapter three. You got some up? And he's saying his prayers and his alms have come up before a memorial. This, the work that Cornelius was putting in, man. The 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 faith that he had, being a devout man, giving much alms. Uh, it said that he was he and all his house. He was a devout man and feared God, him and all his house. The most I ain't just using anybody, man. That's, That's what right. people don't understand, man. The most I said, now <clears throat> is your works come up before memorial me. It's time for me to use you now. Right. I see that I can use you for this mission. Hey, it's time. You've been putting in a lot of work, man. That's what we have to look into, man. That goes to show that when that goes to show, like when you're putting in your work, that's why the Lord said your work won't be forgotten. That's right. So all the things that we do on this wall, guess what? You might not see it today, tomorrow, but when your works come up, like when the angels take it to the most high, hey, this is brother's club. The most high look, okay, it's his turn. Or this is sister's turn. So when your works come up, guess what? He gonna judge it rather be, hey, okay, well, he didn't do, do this, this, and this. Okay, then, put this judgment on him. But if she did this, did this, guess what? Bless her with it. This is how your work's being done. Because like you say in Christianity, what we what we talk, we in faith. But faith without they have no works with it. The most high God said he's a man of what? He said actions will be weighed, right? According to what? First Samuel chapter two and what? Verse three. 
Go ahead, uh. Let's get Second Ezra to prove that only the Israelites can keep God's commandments. Second Ezra chapter three, verse thirty-six. The book of Second Ezra chapter three, verse thirty-six. Thou shalt find that Israel by name had kept thy precepts. Precepts is translated into what? Into laws. Precept is a law. Read on. But not the heathen. But what are? But not the heathen. Thou shalt find that Israel by name have kept thy precepts or thy law, but not the heathen. They don't keep God's commandments, man. They don't. That's why even when we're telling them, they know the Sabbath is on Saturday. They ain't trying That's to right. keep it. They ain't trying to eat. Uh, Joe Osteen, he probably said that you shouldn't eat pork, but I'm pretty sure he, hey, guess what? He eating a pork chop sandwich. He probably eating that thing bloody, too. Adding sin to sin. Give me Psalms. Give me another precept. Give me Psalms chapter 10 and verse 3. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 10, verse 3. For the wicked boasted of his heart's desire, uh -huh. and blessed the covetous, and, and blessed the covetous, whom the Lord abhorred. Whom the Lord abhorred. We know the wicked is who? It's Esau, according to what? Malachi 1 and 4 on down. I'll praise God. Read on. Verse 4. The wicked through the pride of his countenance. The wicked through the pride of his countenance. Read on. Will not seek after God. Would not what? I, will not seek after God. You no, know, it's some Edomites that's gonna keep the commandments. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. Read on, uh. God is not in all his thoughts. Read that again, man. God is not in all his thoughts. So our people trying to save Esau, man. Who can make straight what the Most High God had made crooked, man? These are precepts that they're not reading. Therefore, guess what? That's why they lost. That's why they're brainwashed. That's why they're in sorcery. That's what Christianity is. Christianity is sorcery, man. A lot of people don't understand that. That's what he talks about in the book of Isaiah. That's all that it is. Let's go back to the book of Acts. Chapter 10. We have to get that understanding. Acts chapter 10 is not the Most High God giving Peter a vision to eat pork, man. That is not that, man. This was a vision, guess what, to go and do what? Get the northern tribe. Uh, the book of Acts chapter 10, verse 5. And now send me to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Jump down to verse 11. Verse 11. And saw heaven open. And a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheep knit at the four corners, and let down to the earth, uh -huh. wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. So the Most High God is comparing what? The northern tribe to the beast of the earth. We got precepts on the beast of the earth. Brother should know them. Sister should know these things. Meaning what? When we're not keeping God's laws, that statutes and commandments, we're like what? We're like beasts. What precept you got, uh, Ezra? I see you over there thinking. You shouldn't have thought. I, man, I got the call on it. And we did a class on Acts chapter 10, so brothers should have precepts down in their Bible. Exactly. So we're not going to cover this. We just want to cover this one part, and we're going to jump over to verse 11. Get straight to it. We got the precept. Me and a beast. What you got, Brother Booker? You was on fire last week, man. See if you can continue that thing. <laughs> what you got, huh? <laughs> well, you better light that thing back up. What you got, uh, Tony? Genesis 3 and 18. Genesis 3 and 18. Talking about men or beast. Let's see what I got, man. You said Ecclesiastes. Who said that? Ecclesiastes what? 3 and 18. I said Genesis 3 and 18. Well, we want that thing plain, literally showing you Genesis 3 and 18. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Uh -huh. But even like how Brother Charles said, you got Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 18. 
Make sure y'all write that down. Just one of the many precepts showing you that when we're not keeping God's laws, statutes, and commandments, we're no better than the beast of the field. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 18. I said in mine heart concerning the estate of the sons of men, that God might manifest them, and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. Or what? Are beasts. So we're considered beasts. That's what he was comparing the northern tribe to, because they did what? He cast them off from being his chosen people. That's why a lot of times brothers and sisters don't understand the, the meaning of Gentiles, especially in Christianity. The meaning of Gentiles means what? Usually it means a non-Israelite people. So sometimes in the New Testament, when you see the word Gentile, it can literally be referring to Israelites. They don't understand anything. Every time they see in the word Gentile, it's automatically talking about the other nations. But that's not so. That's some of the deeper understanding that Peter was warning us about Paul's writings. Let's go back to Acts. Chapter 10 and jump down to verse 13. Acts chapter 10 verse 13 and there came a voice to him rise, peace, kill and eat. So they think in Christianity to take this and say that guess what? Oh God changed the dietary laws when in fact it has nothing to do with eating anything. This is a vision. Read on. But Peter said not so Lord. Read that again up. But Peter said not so Lord. He like not so Lord. Read on up. For I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And he's letting you know I've never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Read on up. And the voice spake it to him again the second time. What God had cleansed, that called that called not thou come. So God had been what cleansed the northern tribe to guess what? Bring them back into the fold. Even by the what? By the death of Yahweh. That's why it's pivotal to understand Bible chronology. Even in Acts chapter 1, we've seen where Christ came back and was seen of everybody for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, since Adam died on the cross, Peter, it's good for you to guess what? Go back and go get the northern tribe. That's all that this is going into. Jump down to verse 28. Acts chapter 10, verse 28. And he said unto them, ye know how that is that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. Read on. But God has had shed sh sh But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Any what? I any man common or unclean. So this is literally the breakdown or the precept to verse eleven. He's literally letting you know that it's talking about man common or unclean preferably what the northern tribe so make sure y'all pre prefix uh precept that with verse 28 and verse 11 jump down to verse 34 acts chapter 10 verse 34 then peter opened his mouth and said of a truth i perceive that god is no respecter of person what brother got the precept for respect of person just off the dome real quick off the dome, man. Y'all know it's coming. Y'all got to be prepared. Prepare what you got. <laughs> Scared of anything I'm going to call on him today. And he looking around. I'm looking at you. What's the precept? Exodus 2 and 25. Hold up, man. <laughs> Hold up, man. All praise. We got a new brother up in this thing, man. All praise, huh? Y'all think brother new. He's been following us for a while. I'm just messing with him. No, oh, praise God. Read verse 35. Uh. Acts 10 and 35. But in every nation, he that feared him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Read on. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel. Man, read verse 35 again. Uh. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel. Uh, 35. Read 35 again. It's a lot. But in every nation, he that feared him and working righteousness is accepted with him. So a lot of times Christians think that they got us on that thing. But in every nation, read verse 36. 
the word which God sent unto the children of Israel. Boom! Drop the mic. And what did we say, Shalom? For real. Right. <laughs> the word which God sent unto the children of Israel that was scattered among every nation. Yeah, I just wanted to read 36. I kept saying 36. I already know you did. I wanted you to read that book too, sure. Shalom. Read 36 again, huh? 36. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Yahweh. He is the Lord of all. So he's literally giving us the understanding. Let's jump over chapter 11. 11 and verse 19. Because guess what? Peter reaffirmed these things, man. The book of Acts, chapter 11, verse 19. Jump up to verse 18. I verse know, I know, brothers and sisters. Acts 11 and 18. When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then had God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. So, who are these Gentiles that are granted repentance? The northern tribe. It's going to clear it up. Read on. 19. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen. Because Stephen was put to death. Read on. Traveled as far as Venus and Cyprus and Antioch. That's what we have on the board. Antioch is what you would call modern day Turkey today. Read on. Preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. Read that last part again. Huh? Preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. They weren't teaching nobody but the Jews only, man. That's a cold cut precept right there, man. That's some brothers got to have when they're dealing with Christians that's, guess what? Thinking that God had come to save all Gentiles or everybody. He's literally telling you that Peter was teaching none but the Jews only. The disciples weren't teaching nothing but the Jews only, man. That's it. Let's get Acts chapter 14 and verse 1. So we see him going to what? Going to Antioch. See him going to Cyprus. See him going to Phoenicia. This is what you would call today as modern day Asia Minor. So we see even on the TV, we see the route that he took. Started at Antioch, we went to Philippi, we went into Ephesus, then he went into Corinth. You see him going all the way around. That was the, the known world during that time, or the most popular around this area, around the Mediterranean Sea. Like I say, it's hey, a lot of times I tell brothers and sisters, watch them history channel things be good, man. But a lot of times that's all they're doing is talking about the Bible. And you can be on there to decipher what is true and what is false on there. Tune in to those things, man. They give a lot of good uh points on there, you know, with some a lot of lies. You know, but hey, like you say, you have to have spiritual discernment with that thing, man. Jump over to Acts 14 and verse one. The book of Acts chapter 14 verse 1. And it came to pass in, 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 in Iconium, Iconium uh -huh. Salaki, that they were both together in the, into the synagogue of the Jews and so spake that a great multitude, both the Jews and also of the Greeks believed. Read that again. Uh -huh. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews. Uh -huh. And so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. So when the Christian read this, right, they'll look at it saying, when it said the Jews and the Greeks, okay. But when it, okay, they just keep it, they just keep it safe, they just keep it just like that. Well, how could you put all nations in there? That's the thing we need to be asking. How could you put all nations in there? It just says the Jews and the Greeks. So what does that even mean? Because now we have to put things in, in context on how things go. Because a lot of time when we read Jews and Greeks, you read this all through the, to the through the New Testament, Jews and Greeks. Now is that concerning the whole whole world? No, it's not concerning the whole world. It keeps saying Jews and Greeks. Why does it keep saying Jews and Greeks? Because Greeks mean something. The Grecians, guess what? We know they come from Esau, but guess what? We know there's Hellenized Jews too. They're, they're what speak, they're speak, they spoke what? The 
the, the Greek language or the Greek tongue, right? Just like us. We in Israel, guess what we do? We are Israelite, but we speak English. Some of us speak Spanglish. But that's still, guess what? Our, our, the language we speak don't dictate our nationality. Just because, guess what? Even, even our citizenship don't dictate our nationality. Because guess what? All of us, we're Israelites, but we're Americans. We're, guess what? If somebody was over there in Spain and he was an Israelite, guess what? He is, he, he'll be, uh, guess what? He's Spanish. We just said, go get Saul, a Jew of what? Of Tarsus. Right, you see that out of the scripture, a Jew of Tarsus, even in Acts uh, 19. Or well, Paul lets them know when he starts speaking the Greek tongue. We always have got to let brothers and sisters know that, man. So, Paul was a very learned man. He spoke Greek, he spoke Latin, he spoke Hebrew. He was very learned. So, you can see why the Most High God had Christ to use to reach our people. Iconium is modern day Turkey. The modern day word for it today is Konya. But that is in Turkey. A lot of these places, let me say one too far from, too far from Antioch. Give me 2 Maccabees chapter 6, verse 6. The book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 6, verse 6. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts. Read that again. Huh? Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts. Read on. Or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So even during the Greek captivity, we couldn't call ourselves Jews. We couldn't call ourselves Israelites. So what were we calling ourselves? Greeks. We were calling ourselves Greeks. Grecians. So this is why it's saying this in Acts chapter 14 verse 1. That's why it's very important to understand timeline histories. You got the Greek captivity. Then you got the Roman captivity. Go back to Acts chapter 14 verse 1. Acts chapter 14 verse 1. And it came to pass in, in, in Iconium, Iconium mm -hmm. that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews. And so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. Because what is the precept to believe? How do we know somebody believes? I'll pray. So, Rock 32, 24. You believe when you what? Take heed to the commandments. So, we know that these are Jews or Greeks that are what? Keeping God's commandments. So, these can't be actual Greeks. That's why it's very important to do what? Precept must be upon precept. I would say, what is the precept? I'm trying to think of Psalms 119 verse 104. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Read on up. Verse 2 of Acts chapter 14. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles uh -huh. and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. And even verse 2 clear it up. What was the key in that one? What was the key word that we know that they Israelites? Uh-uh. Read verse 2 again. Verse 2. Say but, it again. Brethren. Read it again, though. Huh? But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles. The unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles. Read on. And made their minds evil affected against the brethren. And now they're trying to seduce them with certain doctrines. Trying to get them to guess what stir off. Go ahead, huh? It is even bring this up to modern day. The same thing they did then, the same thing they do now. Just like the unbelieving Israelites right now, guess what? You have people they'll they'll try to make the northern tribe to go off too. They do the same thing because why? A lot of us, even a lot of us, what they say, uh, 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 Judah, we don't supposed to be vexed in April. But a lot of us vexed. This is this is the this is how scriptures be broke down, man. Because because Judah do not supposed to be the Jews don't so, supposed to vex Ephraim, and Ephraim don't supposed to rise above 
above, above Judah. This is this is plain, right? Read up. Read on. Huh? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Three separate brother. What? Say it again. All praise. With two great precepts. Uh, Go ahead, Ock. Acts chapter 14, verse 3. Long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Boy, for real. Even in that, like we said, we know Christ came to what? Die? To bring the northern and the southern tribe back to the fold. Because by all means, we all should have been put to death. But grace is not a license to guess what? To sin. Let's prove that, man. We always got to bring that thing out, man. Let's get that in the book of Romans, man. Because we know we got the Christian scoffers on there. <coughs> Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. Romans 6 and 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Read on. God forbid. Read on. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer so, therein? So just because we got grace doesn't mean we can still keep sinning. Jump down to verse 14. Romans 6 and 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. Now hold up. Read verse 15. 15. What then? Shall we sin? 15 answers 14. Shall we sin? Sin is the breaking of God's commandments. Read on. What then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Meaning we are not what? Under the sacrificial law. But we have to keep the other four sects of the laws. The dietary, the moral, the civil, and the ceremonial laws. Let's go back. The book of Acts, chapter 14, verse 4. But the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. Uh -huh. And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers, to use them despitefully and to stone them. So we know, guess what? It'll come time where we'll be persecuted out there, man. And literally you have to, guess what? Defend the, the, the gospel of Christ. They're going to literally come after us, man, for teaching the truth of the, about the Bible, man. Go ahead, up. And this should give you a good example. Just like us being in the truth and, and, and the people that's in the churches. It's a whole lot more of them than it is of us. That's the reason why they, that's why a multitude of them, why you think they take up the stone us? It be so many of them, Right? And they stone what the small masses. It be a couple brothers here. They stone like several brothers here, and that's that's the division between us that's in the truth and us in the, and then the people in the church. That's the reason why I keep saying they keep they want to stone us. It's so many of them, but we got to defend the gospel. We got to defend this Bible against a multitude of people, man. Our brothers are seeing it, man. Go here. Read verse 6 off. Acts chapter 14, verse 6. They were aware of it. Meaning, so they knew what was going on. Meaning, the most high God give us understanding on where danger is going to come from. Go here. Don't go there. Go to this place. Teach them. They're a little bit more humble. Like even Lois Will. We'll be trying to go to Houston this weekend or next weekend uh, for the Sabbath after class. It's the same thing to teach what the gospel to our people that's in a Gentile state of mind. It's the same things. Read on. They were aware of it and fled unto Lystra and Derby, the cities of Lyconia, and unto the region that, that lieth round about. These are other cities around this area around Antioch and Ephesians, which is modern day Turkey today. Read on. And there they preached the gospel. And there they did what? And there they preached the gospel. Jump. Read verse 8. Verse 8. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, and impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, 
who never had walked. Read on. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. That he had what? Faith to be healed. Read on. Uh. Said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. Read on. And he leaped and walked. So not only was Christ doing miracles, but guess what? He gave spiritual power to the disciples as well and to the apostles. So we clearly see Paul, guess what? Was healing and teaching and traveling. Jump down to 22. 14 and 22 of Acts. <clears throat> Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Read that part again. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to be to continue in the faith, uh -huh. and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. So we want to home in on that point. A lot of times, brothers and sisters think that you're not going to go through things just because you're in the truth, even though you're keeping the commandments. Guess what? The scripture is literally saying that what through much tribulation we must enter into the kingdom of God. This is literally going into what? Jacob's trouble as well, man. These things was prophesied even in the Old Testament that we was going to go through these things. So we see even when Paul is quoting this, let's see where he was pulling it from. Go to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 30. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 3. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days. Read that again from the top. Uh, Deuteronomy 4 and 30. When thou art in tribulation. Mainly going into Jacob's trouble, being persecuted in his walk, the trials and tribulations. Read on. And all these things are come upon thee. Even in the latter days. Even what are? In the latter days. So this is how you know we're in the latter days. This is a prophecy. Read on up. If thou turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient unto his voice. Read on. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee. Read on. Neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he sware unto them. So that's how we're saved out of tribulation. Brothers and sisters struggling with their job, struggling with what? Family members, children and so forth hey guess what you got to cleave to the most high god that's why we always say what so rock chapter two that's a, the total pick me up chapter man for brothers and sisters that are feeling down in the spirit that that chapter instantly lifts your spirits back up man because we know we're gonna have to catch hell on her but the thing is to build us up and to strengthen us man that we may what still be diligent in this walk that's what these things are for man go ahead up Let's get another precept on there, man. Let's go to Romans chapter 5, man. Like what I was going into, man. That's heavy, man. Romans chapter 5. And Romans chapter 5, like you say, these things go one and the same to help to help pick brothers up. But it explains why we go through tribulation too. Right? This Romans chapter 5 explains it. Start at verse uh, start at verse 2. Romans chapter 5, verse 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace uh -huh, read. wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Uh -huh, so now it's been said, this is the, this is showing us how we get the glory of God, but it's going to explain why we go through tribulation, what tribulation, the attribute tribulation brings to us, right? Read it up. Verse 3, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. He said we do what up? We glory in tribulations also. Even, guess what? The Lord give us give us good time, but he also give us, guess what? Tests that we got to endure too. Trials that we got to endure too. We glory in tribulation also, right? Read. Knowing that the tribulation worketh patient. The things that we go through brings patience. Because the more he give us understanding of the Bible, the more patient we must be for our people, man. Right? Read on. And patience, experience. And patience bring experience, man. Read. And experience hope. And experience bring hope. Read. And hope make it not a shame. You see how the levels of the thing is it builds up? 
it builds up level of faith in this walk, man, that we can be, that we can endure in the, that we can endure to the end, right? Read on. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Read on. By the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. All praise. Go ahead, uh. Let's go back to Acts chapter 14. I forgot a point. Jump back up to Acts 14 and verse 11. I'm going to read this. I'm going to see what brothers, what brothers, what was they dealing with over there in that area, in the churches of Iconium, uh, the churches of, uh, in the churches in Turkey. Read verse 11. Uh. Acts chapter 14, verse 11. And when the people saw what Paul had done. Meaning what? By healing the man, the crippled man. Read on. They lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lyconia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. Read verse 12. And they called Barnabas. So Barnabas Jupiter. was with Paul. They called Barnabas who? Jupiter. Read on. And Paul, Mercurius. Uh-huh. Because he was the chief speaker. So what was this church dealing with? Any brother know? Say it again. Say it again. Idolatry. Idolatry. Exactly. Even going into witchcraft as well. Meaning what? Trying to invoke the gods. Trying to say that there are some gods or something. Now we're gods, but they're literally taking this literally. In the form of the Most High. That's where you get these things from. Jupiter and Mercury. Greek gods and so forth. That's why the Bible tells us what? Let's get that. Give me a Leviticus chapter 20, verse 23. Uh, yeah. Leviticus 20 and verse 23. The book of Leviticus chapter 20, verse 23. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation. Read that again. Uh. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation. That's why it was commandments that we should what, walk in the manners of the nation. Celebrating birthdays, celebrating their holidays, celebrating anything, their, their gods and goddesses. We shouldn't do those things, calling ourselves Mercury and Jer uh, Jupiter, or calling ourselves Hotel, my brother. That's the, hey, this is the same thing, it's just different subjects. Going into what? Kemet, going into philosophies, going into doctrines. Read on up. And you shall not walk in the manners of the nations, which I cast out before you. For they committed all these things, and therefore I abhorred them. He what? I abhorred them. The most I got abhors the other nations because they deal in these doctrines and philosophies. Let's go back. And go ahead. I'll... No, I was going to say something. I I'll go ahead. Oh, just touching on verse fifteen, man. He, like you said, that's exactly what they were dealing with. Because when Paul and when when Peter and, and Barnabas when when they understood it, when Paul and Barnabas understood it, man, they was like, "Hold on, what y'all doing, man?" Jupiter, Mercury, they're like, man, why y'all why are y'all trying to give praise to things that are, of idols? Like fifteen and saying, "Sirs, why do you do these things? Uh -huh. We also are men of like passions with you. Don't give me no glory. Don't, don't try to put me up to being a god. I'm a man just like you." He said, in preaching to you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God. Turn from these vanities to the living God. Man, right? That's right. Which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are within. So when Paul and Barnabas, when they understood what they were trying to do, they put them on a pedestal or something. Paul was like, nah, y'all tripping, man. That's right. I am saying, we got the one true God. This was idolatry. This why they were dealing with it. And they was doing what? They were sacrificed. Jump up to verse 13. They were sacrificed to these gods. Uh -huh. Verse 13. Then the priest of Jupiter, which is before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people. And would have done sacrifice. Uh -huh. So what do you think they was doing there? They was teaching our people what? Don't do that. Don't sacrifice unto idols. Sacrifice unto the one true God. Even issuing in the understanding that Christ was the sacrificial lamb. So they fight on multiple fronts. Letting our people know that we didn't have the sacrifice to come back to the one living God. I misspoke on that. Go ahead, up. Where do you see Paul teaching anything different? That's right. What? I don't know what these Christians did, man. They, 
they 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 wild over you know what I'm saying they are saying that Christ changed something when Christ said what I came to do the will of the Father. He said, Don't call nothing, ain't nothing good but one, not me. When did Christ change anything, man? That's right. When did Paul go and teach any other thing? He told him, No, this is idolatry that y'all in. Can't be doing it. He tried to teach the word of God more in a, in a better sense or aspect. That's, That's right. what they don't understand. Man. Jump down to verse 19. Verse 19. And there came, and there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and from Iconium, who persuaded the people, having stoned Paul. Having what? And having stoned Paul, Read on now. drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. So guess what, for Paul teaching the truth, guess what? He suffered persecutions. Just like many of our people. You see the wicked brother that we was dealing with a couple weeks ago, man. Seemed like a nice little cover. That brother has so many demons on him, boy. When we started actually teaching the truth about the Bible, they did not want to hear those things, man. All in brother's face. Literally, if he could have done us harm, I'm pretty sure the brother would have. Because he was, guess what? Edging brothers on. Literally doing those things, man. But we got to stay bold and understand that, guess what? These scriptures hit harder than Mike Tyson, man. A lot of times brothers want to fight. No, you got to stay in the spirit. They want you to fight so it can stop the scriptures from coming out, whooping that behind, man. That's all that they want to do. That's why it's pivotal for brothers to stay in the spirit out there because they looking to bring up a case against us. Now, if we go there, yes, we take brothers down, call the police. Guess what? Wild brothers are still teaching. We're going to fight on multiple fronts up in this thing, man, because that's, that's all they want to do is take the word away. Jump down to verse 22 again up. Acts 14 and 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. Uh -huh. Even after he got stoned, continue in the faith, man. Y'all seen the works that we did? We healed the brother. We teaching y'all the understanding, teaching y'all not to sacrifice the idols, teaching y'all what? The commandments. Read on up. And that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. And that was an, uh, that was an example of that. We got to with much tribulation enter in. Brothers and sisters got to meditate on that thing. Read Amen. on up. 23. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. Hey, and that thing is heavy, man. When they had ordained them elders in every church, meaning what? Paul was going through setting up order in the churches. That's what this truth is all about, man. It's order. You got brothers over there in Memphis. Got brothers in uh, Minnesota, E. Hood in Florida, Yahweh in Houston. The call is to set up order and to guess what? Build churches, man, to teach our people. That's what this truth is all about. We even see what our brothers with IUIC, they got churches everywhere, man. All praise to the most high God. Sakari, Sons of Thunder. Brothers out here doing marvelous work, doing the same work that Paul did in his time, man. That's why it means what? It's nothing new. Under the sun, man. That's what these scriptures is going into, and brothers got to have his same mind frame. That's why we'll be trying to go to more places, man. Brothers got to be ready too. Like we said, brothers got to be in order, man. Jump down to verse 15. Chapter 15 and verse 1. Acts chapter 15, verse 1. And it's getting to some of the heavier stuff. Read this out. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses. Ye cannot be saved. So you still have what? Dissent and disputing about do we sacrifice to be saved or do we believe on Christ? This is the thing that, guess what? Christ let Paul know and was giving him the understanding. All you have to do is believe and have faith on me while keeping the commandments. You no longer sacrifice for your sins. Because the Most High God is what? He's tired of the burnt offering, the bull of the ghost. Let's get that. Prophesying then let's go to the book of Hosea real quick. Chapter six. Verse six, I think. Hosea chapter six, verse six. Hosea chapter six, verse six. For I desire mercy. And not sacrifice. Read that again. Uh. For I desire mercy and not sacrifice. Read on up. Uh. And the knowledge of God more than burnt offering. And the most high God, he wants us to keep the commandments. He don't want us to be sacrificing. 
to atone for sins. He don't want you to even sin. That's why it was taken away. Read on up. But the like men have transgressed the covenant. There have they dealt treacherously against you. But then that's what our people were. Was treacherous, wicked as hell, and broke the covenant. Go back over to Acts chapter 15 verse 1 again. So it was disputing between Barnabas and Paul and brethren from Israel. Read verse 15 and 1 again. Acts 15 and 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. We don't know. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them. Meaning what? Not able to come on one accord with one another. They was debating the scriptures constantly, like many times we do, among, guess what, our Christian counterparts. And even with each other in the truth, when brothers got precepts and so forth, we go through the precepts. Hey, out of the mouth of what? Two or three witnesses shall the matter be established. Read on up. They determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. So not only did they take this, they couldn't come to an agreement, so they sent them back to the uh, with, among more learned men to get a, a better understanding. Jump down, we'll read verse 3. Verse 3, and being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenix and Samaria. And who? And Samaria. Who is Samaria? Brothers should know that. What precept? The capital of Ephraim, the capital of the northern kingdom, Samaria or Israelites. It was a small remnant, but it's still Israelites. A lot of times they think about the Samaritan woman thinking that she was of another nation. In the book of John chapter 4, no, she was an Israelite. Remember, the majority of the northern tribe was where? Over here in the Americas. But you still had what? Small remnants like Anna, the prophetess from the tribe of Asher. The Samaritan woman, when you read these books diligently, you see that, guess what? You have small remnants of northern tribes still over there. Read on. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenix and Samaria, declaring the conversation of the Gentiles, and they caused great uh, conversion. Shalaki. Declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. It says what? Even on their way back to guess what? To deal and to take counsel on, guess what, getting a proper understanding on teaching Christ. It says they was doing the work and converted Gentiles and caused great joy unto the brethren. Another key word, letting you know that they were what? Israelites. He's constantly teaching Israelites. Remember Acts 11 and 19. And seeing how they call Samaria Gentiles. Did y'all catch that? That's what these precepts should be lining up with brothers. Like when you brothers pull in like Matthew chapter 4. These should be lining up with the precepts when brothers, when you see key words, man. Go ahead, Read uh. verse 5, uh. <clears throat> Verse 5. But there arose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed. Which who? <clears throat> so like it, which believed. Hey, yes, yeah, certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed. Read on. Saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. So they needed a better understanding on this as well. They believed, like, hey, break it down a little bit more. Because it tell you that it was needful to circumcise them and command them to keep the law of Moses. Even during this time, you had certain Pharisees that was what? Still teaching the laws of God. So I don't know what Christians are talking about or what book of Acts that they read. Where they're not keeping God's law, statutes, and commandments, man. I don't see it. Jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by mouth should hear by, the by word. My, by my mouth. That the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Now, I'm going to see what brother is paying attention. What Gentile was Peter sent to and they believed? That's why you, you have to pay attention to this thing, man. 
what Gentile work was Peter sent to and they believe we just read it hello hello what you got brother Judah boy say it again Cornelius in Acts chapter 10 remember that's what we tell brothers you got to also read in context as well and and know why you are pulling certain precepts you have to know that you got some up Acts chapter 10 read verse 7 again uh, verse 7 and when there had been much dispute Peter rose up and said unto them men and brethren ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe and they believe that thing let me see yeah uh, we're in the spirit uh, uh, praise God Read verse 8 and we going to get that. Verse I got eight. it right here, but I'm looking. So I'll just go ahead and get that. Verse 8. And God which knoweth the hearts, bear the witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. Uh -huh. Read on. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. By what? By faith. By faith, meaning what? By Christ. Not by animal sacrifice. That word there is key. Now jump over. Y'all put precept Acts 15, 7, 8, and 9 with Acts 10 and 44. Man, that's that's clear cut, man. He said, put no difference between us and them. This going in concerning the northern and southern tribe, man. Right? I'll pray. The book of Acts chapter 10, verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Uh-huh. Going into what? Cornelius and his whole household. Read on. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. They were what? Were astonished. Why were they astonished? Why was the circumcision of the southern tribe astonished of Peter going to the northern tribe? Because what? Because they was cast off. They like, man, what is he doing teaching to them when they cast them off? Not knowing that this is what Christ was teaching. Judah shall arise first. Let's get the prophecy what Christ was saying then. Matthew chapter 4. Any brother know? Matthew chapter 4. Yeah. Like we say, Christians will not precept this Bible this way. They live, they always say that we isolate and cherry pick scriptures, but they don't understand that we understand the context. So we're able to pull those precepts and understand the context. We can fight on multiple fronts on this thing. Read this. I'll start at verse 14. Matthew chapter 4. Start at verse, verse 13. Salaki. Matthew 4 and 13. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capri. Capernaum. Capernaum. Uh -huh. which is upon the seacoast and the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali. So why did Christ go to Zebulun and Nep Naphtali? Read on. That he might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Galilee of what? Galilee of the Gentiles. So it was prophesied in what? Isaiah 9 and 1. That Christ was going to go and start teaching the northern tribe. That's why, even like what Brother Charles was saying, that's why they was astonished because the northern tribe had been cast off for so long. They like, why is he teaching them, man? Not knowing and breaking down the prophecies that Christ was teaching the whole time. That's why Christ always said, having eyes but see not, having ears but hear not. Read on, read verse 16. Verse 16. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. The northern tribe sat in great darkness. They saw a great light. That great light was Christ coming to bring them back into the fold. And that, and that great light goes into Isaiah 49 and 6. Right? That's the great light. And you can finish reading that precept in, in uh, what Isaiah 14, I, I mean 4 verse 16. Uh, Isaiah 49. That great light was, was Isaiah 49 and 6. Read verse 16 again. Huh? Verse 16. 
the people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. So this is why, like we said, they were astonished at that when we go back to the book of Acts. Like I said, this is all about bringing the northern tribe back to the fold, traveling, teaching our people the law, statutes, and commandments. This was the uh, the acts of Paul. And really of all the apostles and the disciples. Let's go back to Acts chapter 15. Like we said, we're going too fast, brothers and sisters. Raise your hand. Let us know. We'll slow it down. <clears throat> the book of Acts chapter 15, verse, verse 8. Now start. Go to, uh, yeah, thanks, all. Verse 8. And God. Which knoweth the hearts, bear the witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. Giving the northern tribe the Holy Ghost. What is the Holy Ghost according to the Bible? All praise. The laws of God. It's not this thing where you get Sister Betty roll around the wig, come on. That is not the Holy Ghost. People got demons on them and get the hell away from them if they doing that. That is not what the Holy Ghost is, man. That's something we was taught in slavery. That's not what that is, man. The Holy Ghost is spiritual understanding, the law, statutes, and commandments, and spiritual power, which we no longer have. Read on up. Verse 9. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Purifying their hearts by faith, not by animal sacrifice. This is the point. Faith. We know that, guess what? Christ came by truth and by faith. Read verse 10. Verse 10. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Now, brothers and sisters, are starting to understand. What is the yoke of bondage that our people was put in or under? What you got, Ernest? Uh, sacrificial Salakia, Judah 4. Brother Judah boy on, on fire in this thing, man. The, the, the yoke the uh so like i don't want to butcher the yoke that our people was not able to bear was the animal sacrifice any brother got a precept though y'all write this thing down let's go to the book say it again who said it uh-uh but you want it with yoke and bondage give me galatians chapter 5 verse 1. y'all write this next to that Galatians 5 and 1 precepts with Acts 15 and 10. The book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled against again with the yoke of the bondage. Read that again now. Galatians 5 and 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ had made us free. In the liberty of what? Liberty of what? Not sacrificing to atone for sins. Make sure, brothers and sisters, write that down. Because we know, like we say, Paul's letters are hard to be understood. But like I asked, brothers, who wrote the book of Acts? Luke. Luke. A lot of people think Paul wrote the book of Acts. Luke wrote the book of Acts. Read Galatians 5 and 1 again. Huh? Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. The yoke of bondage is a sacrificial law. Read on up. Huh? Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised Christ shall profit you nothing. Read verse 2 again. Uh, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Read on. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. So if you want to sacrifice that, you're going to be up under the judgments that come with sacrificing. Meaning you won't have grace, you won't have mercy anymore. That's why we need Christ. Because we know sometimes brothers and sisters fall off sometimes. Certain sins, guess what? You dealt in lust, in adultery, idolatry, breaking the Sabbath. How many times brothers and sisters broke the Sabbath, man? You would have been put to death, man. 
ah, uh, nah, I just didn't feel like coming today. I didn't feel like dropping. Christ, the most I got, he's not trying to hear that. Go ahead, up. Read verse 4. Verse 4. Christ has become of no effect unto you. So meaning he won't be no effect to you. Christians take this as if you don't have to do no commandments. That's not what the Bible is saying, man. Read on. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law. By the who? By the law. By what law? The sacrificial law. Not the whole law. Because we know Romans 7 and 1 said that what? We're bound by the law as long as we live it. Second Ezra 9 and 36. I mean the laws is going to be forever. Even like Captain Jeroboam always bring up. We're going to be judged by the law. I mean, come on, man. This thing is plain. Go ahead, huh? That's it. Let's go back. With the second age nine, this is about the performance of the law. Yes. Uh huh. I just write that thing down. No brother should have that. Second Ezra's nine and thirty-six. On down to verse 37. Notwithstanding, the law perish it not, but remain it in its force. The law is not going to perish, man. Let's go back to Acts. Chapter 15. We'll get, jump on down. So we know that Peter was the head apostle. So he was given the understanding. Remember, Peter walked with Christ. So Christ gave him a good understanding on these things and we know some of our brothers break it down differently you know but like we say that's the understanding we see through the scriptures precept upon precept and we understand why they teach certain things even though we may not agree with it we know that christ is going to get us back all on one accord let's go back to acts chapter 15 and verse 14 Acts chapter 15, verse 14. Simeon had declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles uh -huh. to take out of them a people for his name. Man, and that's clear. To take out of him a people for his name. Read verse 15. It's going to clear it up if it's not clear. Verse 15. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. Read on. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is falling down. Both the northern and the southern tribe were falling down because under David, they were under David. He had them both, right. northern and the southern tribe. Read on. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. Hold up. Brother should know this precept. Brother Fred, what precept you got? Yeah. Um, verse... 16, what's the precept? All praise, I get the spirit. Amos 9 and 11. When you see as it is written, guess what? It's quoting the Old Testament. Peter quoted the Old Testament. Paul quoted the Old Testament. It clears it up. We Christians are automatic. Why do you think they don't want us reading the Old Testament? Because they know that the Old Testament is specifically talking about the nation of Israel. Hell, the New Testament is too. They just don't understand it. But it's without a shadow of a doubt that the uh, Old Testament is. Let's get there. Amos chapter 9 verse 11. Because it was prophesied in the Old Testament. Y'all make sure y'all get these clear, clear cuts right here, man. When you see it as it is written, it's written somewhere in the Old Testament. The book of Amos, chapter 9, verse 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacles of David that is fallen. So even like Captain Jeroboam would say, when did the Most High God put the 12 tribes back together again? He ain't did that. So even the fake Jews that's over there, the column says Levi. Well, what the hell is the Levi? Levi, damn it. Jeez. Slot, don't cuss him. Yeah. You know, he flexed my spirit with that thing, man. Right. What are other ten tribes at then? Because all we see over there is Judah. Let y'all tell it. 
Them damn curly heads and man stock, man. Read on up. Amos 9 and 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacles of David that is fallen. The 12 tribes, read on. And close up the breaches thereof. Or close up the breaches, the divide, the split. Read on. And I will raise up his ruins. And I will build it as in the days of old. In the days of old, in the time of David, they ate. Hey, Israel couldn't be touched, man. David was a mighty man, and he had mighty men set up over the twelve tribes of Israel that were also mighty men. Read on, up. Uh. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. That they may do what, I uh. Possess the remnant of Edom. No, Edom is done away with. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. That they may possess, meaning have Edomites in slavery. When you possess something, you own it, man. That's clear. This is a prophecy. Read on up. And this hadn't happened yet. For real. Not in your camp. Possess. That they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name, says the Lord that doeth it. So if this people that we're going to possess, is this really talking? This is talking about the real heathens. How are the heathens called by God's name? We go over this a lot. And how how are they? And he said, how, how are we possessing you? So but when we go over there to Acts, and they read this right now, they don't think that they're going to be a possession. But when you get the understanding of where it comes from, it shows the same people. Guess what? Y'all going against us, but the Lord said, we're going to possess y'all. You read that again and say, hey, now we're going to get the precept to this. Make sure y'all we write these things down so we can give them a better understanding. No, no, y'all got to be teaching everybody. And this got to be doing this. No, let's show what show what the Lord where what he getting it from. What they say we gonna do to y'all? Y'all gonna be our possession. That's right. How are the heathen called by God's name? I literally just said it. That little brothers, wake them sleepy eyes up. Uh uh. How are the heathen called by God's name? Uh, uh we know the heathen going into what the other nations what other nations are calling themselves god's name say it again the fake jews they are heathens remember they are edomites but they're calling themselves what from the tribe of judah calling themselves jewish that's how they're called by god's name that's not god's chosen people man that's that's what that last part because chris is a yeah, read it again. Amos 9 and 12. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. So these are people that we're going to possess. Read on. And all the heathen which are called by my name. And all the heathen that are called by my name. Said the Lord that doeth this. So we know that, guess what? Even calling themselves what? Christians. Because what? A Christian is a follower of Christ. A Christian do what? Keep the commandments of God. So even calling themselves by that name, you got East Indians that's Christians. How the hell you worshiping the Most High God and Krishna, that octopus lady? Like, come on, man. Krishna is the God of the East Indians, the lady that has the nine arms. I know y'all haven't seen that. The dot in the middle of their foreheads and so forth. No, they're not Christians according to the Bible, man. Because they're not keeping the commandments. You can be from anywhere and say you're a Christian. Man, you can be from wherever you want to, whatever skin tone, color. Yeah, you can have any tongue and then you speak any and say you're a Christian. What we do, we separate that thing in here, man. You're not gonna you're not gonna call yourself a uh from the tribe of Levy. What they say, Levy? Yeah, Levy. Nah, brother, not on our watch. Nah, we ain't having that. We ain't dealing with that, man. Let's go back to Acts chapter fifteen and verse seventeen. Sixteen again. So we got the point. Peter is what? Precepting this with what? Amos 9 and 11. Remember the thought on Amos 9 and 11. It's saying the same thing in the book of Acts. It's just worded differently. But it means the same thing. Read this, Art. Acts 15 and 17. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord. Uh, read verse 16 again. Verse 16. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David. Which is falling down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. Read on. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, said the Lord, 
who doeth all these things. So who is the residue of men and who is the Gentiles? Who is the residue of men? What you got, Brother Dunn? Uh uh. Remember what I just uh -uh, I just gave you to understand it. Remember, we just read what? Amos 9 and 11. Peter is saying the same thing. He's what? Using different words. What is real? And say it again, Brother King. The fake Jews saying the same thing. The residue of the people. In the Old Testament, he called them what? Edomites. Right. We could speak frankly during that time. Paul couldn't speak frankly during the time of the Romans. He would have got put to death. You Edomites, y'all going into slavery. Man, Peter, come here. Let me holler at you right quick. Hmm. Yeah, come see me in the back. Get that gallon and hang them there. So he had to word it in words to where they couldn't understand it. Right. That's why he said the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles. How are they going to seek after the Lord? In slavery. We're going to force them to keep God's commandments. That's why it says, hey, these letters are hard to be understood. That's why you must go precept upon precept. Go ahead, Captain Yard. Oh, no, no, I'm just asking what residue means. Like a small amount of something that you don't really care about. The yeah. residue. Uh, yeah. That's right, the yeah. leftovers. That's right. They give That's you exactly right. what it's talking about. Brothers, y'all write that talking point or whatever y'all got to do to remember that thing, man. It also means remnant, the same thing. Exactly. Remnant. Residue, small amount of people that's left over from the destruction. The kings, the nobles, and you precepted with Psalms 149 and 6 on down. Read on, up. Verse 17, verse 18. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Read on. One four. My sentence is that we trouble them not, like that we trouble not them, uh -huh. which from among the Gentiles a turn to God. So we don't want to trouble them, but they coming back, hey, let them come back up in her. That's what it was already prophesied in what? In the book of Matthew, in Isaiah chapter 9. Read on, huh? But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. So it was taught that these are the only commandments that the northern tribe had to keep. No. These are just the main commandments that they was doing what? Struggling with. Just like a starter pack for Israelite, we tell them brothers what? Grow your beard. Get you some fringes. Stop eating pork. Start a pack for sisters. Sisters, put on long minded dresses. Cover your head when the scriptures is coming out. These are things that we know that we can immediately adapt. And it's saying the same thing. Why is Peter and Paul, they quoting these things? Because what? It's going into them... Keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. That's what he's referencing. Verse 20, but I write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols. What law tells us to abstain from pollutions of idols? This is where brothers got to get into the law. Let's go to the book of Leviticus, chapter 19. That's why when you're thinking about the New Testament, you're always thinking about what? Scriptures of the Old Testament and law, statutes, and commandments that they're precepted with. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 4. Leviticus chapter 19, <coughs> verse 4. Turn ye not unto idols, nor make to yourselves molten gods. I am the Lord your God. So that will be one of the first things that we teach northern tribe. Brother Hosea knows worshiping the Santa Maria northern tribe. The Virgin uh, Mary, they worship those things. Even Brother Donovan know. They worship those things. So those would be the first commandments that we bring out to them. Hey, y'all got to put that idolatry away, man. Idolatry and mixing with the other nations. Those are the main two sins that Northern Tribe deal in. Let's go back. To Acts chapter 15 and verse 20 again. About 20 again. We're going to precept this thing all the way out. Acts 15 and 20. But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols. Because they, wicked Christian pastor talking about Paul wasn't teaching the laws. He teaching the law of Moses, not the law of God. Negro did the same damn thing. Come on, come on. Brother, come on, man. Stop, man. Read that again. Huh? But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollution 
of idols. Which is found in the law in Leviticus 19 and 4. Read on. And from fornication. Where are the laws about fornication found? Where at? Specifically. Leviticus chapter 18. Let's get there. Uh, yeah, you can give me 11. So if brothers and sisters deal with fornication, which is going into sexual sins, these are laws that you can read to meditate on. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 11. The nakedness of thy father's wife, daughter, begotten of thy father, she is thy sister. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. So you shouldn't uncover the nakedness of your father's wife, daughter. She is thy sister. Going into what? Incest. Jump up to verse 10. Huh? Leviticus 18 and 10. The nakedness of thy son's daughter, or of thy daughter's daughter, even their nakedness, thou shalt Thou shalt not uncover, for theirs is thine own nakedness. Uh huh. Read verse 18. Verse 18. Neither shalt thou take a wife to her sister to vex her, to uncover her nakedness beside the other in her lifetime. Do any brother know what that's going into today? That's right. This is going literally going into threesome. No brothers and sisters may not know that this is in the Bible. Yes, you may have multiple wives, but y'all, you can't be up in there wilding out. Menage a twine. Read that again. Huh? Leviticus 18 and 18. Neither shall thou take a wife to her sister to vex her, to uncover her nakedness uh -huh. beside the other in her lifetime. Beside the other in her lifetime. So you cannot have three Brothers understand that thing? Sisters understand that. You know sisters get freaky too. Yes, it's going for both. Brothers do too. Hey, these things are laws for specific reasons. This, like I said, this is no game, man. So these are laws concerning fornication. Because we know in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1, you have the brother sleeping with his what? With one of his father's wives. That's why he's literally quoting these things, man. Let's go back to Acts chapter 20, I mean 15 verse 20. Acts 15 and 20. But that were, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication. Sexual sins, read on. And from things strangled and from blood. Many animals strangled instead of slitting their throats to give a sacrifice. Where is the precepts about blood, us not eating blood? What you got, Brother Donovan? Oh, praise. Let's get there right quick. So you literally got precepts in what? Leviticus 19 about the laws, Leviticus chapter 18, and Leviticus chapter 17. Precepts about idolatry, precepts about fornication, precepts about blood, not eating the blood. Leviticus chapter 17. Start at verse 10. Huh? Verse 10. Leviticus 17 and 10. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel, or of the strangers that shall join among you, that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among the people. So we know Esau damn sure ain't keeping this. You know, they like they uh, stay bloody. Put it on there about two seconds. Give it to me. No, man. Read verse 11, huh? Verse 11. For the life of the flesh is the blood. Uh-huh. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your soul. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Read on. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, No soul of you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger that sojourneth among you eat blood. So guess what? We got to cook that thing, guess what? All the way. Well done, man. No blood. With no blood. So, yeah, I don't know brothers and sisters eating no medium rare. You ain't seeing no damn blood. I, I can't fade it, man. 
Stop playing the games, man. Let's go to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 15 is a heavy, heavy chapter, man. Heavy chapter. Acts 16 and verse 1. The book of Acts chapter 16, verse 1. Uh -huh. Then came he to Derby and to Ly Lystra. And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewish and believed but his father was a Greek. But his father was a Greek. So Christians will take this, literally thinking, well, it says Greek. You know, how can you explain it to us? How can brothers explain it? Going back to what? 2 Maccabees chapter 6, verse 6. 2 Maccabees 1 and 41. Or 1 Maccabees, like 1 and 41, thanks, so. all Letting them know that, guess what? He was in a Gentile state of mind because if he was a real Gentile, why would they be going to teach him? He literally just precepted with Acts 11 and 19, going throughout all of Asia Minor and teaching to none but the Jews only. You can't lose understanding of certain precepts like those. Jump down to verse 13. Huh? So now he's in Philippi. Philippi is going into Greece. So we're seeing how he's making this track from Syria, then going to Turkey, to Ephesus, to Galatia. Now he's going over to Greece. Read this out. Acts 16 and 13. Start at verse 12. Acts 16 and 12. And from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, uh -huh. and a colony. And we were in that city abiding certain days. So they stayed there certain days. Jump down to verse 14. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Thyatira, Th 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 uh -huh. which worshiped God, heard us whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. So sisters have a very important role, too, to listen to the understanding of the scriptures as well. Listening to your husbands, listening to the teachers. If you don't have a husband, these things are very important. So she was sitting by the way, listening, like how we do many a times when we go out to teach our people. Sometimes the Most High God open up the ears for brothers and sisters, but sometimes he don't. But we got to deal in patience with those things. Read on out. Verse 15, and when she was baptized. How was she baptized? He, exactly. Baptized by the word, man. Read on. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. So guess what? She constrained them. Guess what was showing hospitality to one another? Even when certain brothers and sisters that we know of, we're not talking about inviting strangers into your house. Brothers and sisters you don't know, but it's it's a, a kind thing to open up your home to brothers and sisters that we got coming in from out of town. That we know. Because the scriptures literally tell you, do what? Let not every stranger into your house. So you want to know brothers and sisters, man. But this is the work that sisters play a part in, even in this truth. You know, helping sisters, helping God, the congregation, cleaning up, fixing the food, preparing things for brothers that's going on walks, that's going uh, to teach out there on the, in the truth, sewing, helping sisters get fringes, helping new brothers and sisters get fringes, getting church. The, this is the part that sisters play. A lot of times they are, what is the part that this, we're literally reading it? Sisters have a very important role in Israel, but you have to, guess what? Play your role. Play your part and don't be trying to play your husband's part. Don't be trying to play a, a certain authority. No. Stay within your guidelines. Stay within your role. Sister's only job is to do what? To be obedient to their husbands. That's their job, man. Sister's got to check your spirit if you're not dealing in that particular type of spirit. Go ahead, up. Jump down to verse... Say 13. Give me a. Uh, Acts chapter 17. Let me see. Let's see. Now, give me Salaki. 
Give me Acts chapter 16 and verse 28. We'll get there. The book of Acts chapter 16, verse 28. So lock your brothers and sisters. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Acts 16 and 28. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas uh -huh. and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Read on. And they said, Believe on the Lord, Yahweh, and thou shalt be saved. And thy house. And thy house. Meaning what? Keep the commandments and have faith. Read on. And they spake unto him that word of the Lord. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord. And to all that were in his house. Read on. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. And was baptized. When he went to Laki, and were bapt and was, and was baptized, he and all his he and all his straight way so right. guess what they taught this man and guess what he was baptized when he did what heard the words saying the same thing that acts chapter 19 verse 5 is saying so literally what 32 and verse 33 go together jump down to verse acts chapter 17 verse 1 the book of acts chapter 17 verse 1 now when they had passed through amphibious and amphibious and and yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> And Phipolus and Apollonia. Apollonia. They came to Thessalonica, where, where was a synagogue of the Jews. Where was a synagogue of the Jews? Sister, y'all get hot, turn that fan on. Where was a synagogue of the Jews? So a lot of times, guess what? We had churches in what? In Greece. We had churches in Greece, man. Jump down to verse 4. Acts 17 and 4. And now, so, read verse 2, Salaki. So verse 2. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scripture. Now, hey, we got the. I mean, come on, man. It's literally Paul going in on the Sabbath day. Three Sabbath days. Doing what? He ain't going there just to play. He going there to teach them, man. On the Sabbath. Paul is holding Sabbath, so he was doing what? Keeping the commandments. That's Exodus chapter what? 20 and verse 8. Talking about Paul wasn't keeping the commandments. I mean, it's clearly right here. Jump down to verse 4. Verse 4. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas and of the devout Greeks a great multitude and of the chief women, not a few. And you had chief women up in there, not a few. So many people were starting to believe. Jump down to verse 11. Acts chapter 17 verse 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, and that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So sometimes, hey, the spirit of God, you guess what? Go over here. These Negroes not listening. Go ahead, huh? Jump down to verse 12. Read verse 12. Verse 12. Therefore, many of them believed. Also of honorable women, which were Greeks, uh -huh. and of men, not a few. It says, not a fruit, a few, so like it. Read on. 13. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. So you always got what? Wicked Negroes that come to throw a bunker wrench on what the Most High God is trying to build. They didn't agree with those things. Go ahead, I'll. Even like in Acts, reading like in Acts chapter 16, if you jump down to verse 23, they had just got rid of beat Paul and Silas and the people that was with them. So they was going through, they was teaching the word, but they still was going through the persecution. Let's get up. Daily, whether those things were so. So the only scriptures they had to search what Paul and them was talking about and what they were doing was, was the, the Old Testament. Testament. Right. The New Testament, I mean, Paul ain't even wrote the other letters yet. And right. I was going to say the same as that. So in order for them to agree with whatever was going on, 
they had to go in the Old Testament to realize, hey, he, he's doing what the Old Testament was doing. That's right. right. And it said that the Jews and, and Berea was were, 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 were more knowledgeable than the Jews of Thessalonica because they actually searched Certain the scriptures. Day and night. That gives right. you an idea of what we have to be doing daily and night. They said to see whether these things were true. That's why I brought a class. I said, well, you have to contend or, or actually uh, try to make sure that what the disciple was right and wrong. That's what the Jews of Burrell were doing. They said they were more understandable than the Jews of Thessalonica because they searched the scriptures to see whether this was true or not. That's, right. That's what we do, man. That's exactly what we do. We search the scriptures to see if that's true or not. Pastor talk about Christ changed a lot. Hey, you a damn liar. Hold on. We done search the scriptures, brother. What we doing today? Like you said, we seeing brothers daily fighting on multiple fronts, man, with these pastors and with these wicked do uh, uh, doctors that's out here, man. But we search the scriptures daily to see whether it's true or not. Want to pull? Uh, read verse uh, 17. Verse 17. Verse 16, Salaki. Acts 17, verse 16. Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Holy what? I given to idolatry. Because he was where? He was in Greece during this time. Read on out. And we know that they worship Zeus. They worship Diana. Diana today is what? Zeus will be Thor. Diana will be Wonder Woman. Mercury. Jupiter will be what? The god of war? These so, are people still, say it again. They call it uh, Mercury. I mean, Mercury is Hermes and uh, Hermes, uh, Hermes, the Flash. Yeah, that's right. Is, and uh, Jupiter is Zeus. That's right. Read verse 17 again. Uh. Verse 17. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Uh huh. Then certain philosophers. Of the Epicureans and of the Stoics, Stoics, Stoics uh -huh. encountered him, and some said, "What will this babbler say?" Uh, others, others, some. He seemed to be a sinner, forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Christ and the resurrection. Now, the Epicureans is people that just go into and like to deal in philosophy. Like we say, you even during this time you had, or even afterwards, you know, with like Plato, Socrates, our people, and even America today, they hold these people in great status. Even with Galileo, with him talking about astrology and the solar system. That's why mainly our people today believe that the earth revolves around the sun instead of the sun revolving around the earth because of these Greek philosophers. Hey, I'm talking about our people going off because they believe these things, man. Read on, up. Verse 18. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, what will this babbler say? Other some, he seemed to be a center forth of strange gods because he preached it to them. Christ and the resurrection. Uh huh. And they took him and brought him unto Aregapus. Aregapus. I read. I'll pray. That's what I'm talking about. Aregapus saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speaking is. Uh huh. Because they, they wouldn't understand it because they was raised up in what Greek philosophies and Greek traditions. So Paul was going through Acts, what? Teaching our people. The true understanding of the scriptures. Jump down to verse 22. Verse 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. Because we got those people out there, man. They don't want to go up on the ladder. Man, walk your ass up on that ladder. Be careful, though. Hey, you know you got to put salt down and do certain things. Don't step over that broom. Psst, brother, that's voodoo. Sister, that's voodoo. Stop doing that, man. Hey, some people be too super, superstitious. Go ahead, huh? Man, that, man, I don't know if y'all, that verse 19 heavy, man. Like they was trying, they told Paul that he was he was preaching. He was teaching some new thing. That's just like us in this truth. They say that we was, this new. They said this is new. 
But no, we're teaching the things of old. Christianity is new. Right. But what we teaching was was from, from the beginning. Right? Go ahead. Uh. Jump down to verse 29. Verse 29. Acts 17 and 29. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold and silver. Read that again. Uh. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver. So even Christians with the Godhead, they literally think it is triune God. No, Godhead just means the powers. That's it. It don't mean the Trinity. Stop thinking that, man. When you go into etymology of words, these things are very important to look up. Because they'll literally take that, oh, the Godhead. No, that's just literally talking about the Most High God being in complete authority. Because remember, we are gods too, but we're not the Most High God. Read on up. Verse 30. Verse 30. Oh, that the Godhead is likened to gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. Give me Baruch chapter 6. Verse 70 is a precept for idols. So he's literally letting them know that guess what? We have to come up out of that idolatry. You can't imagine how many times, even like with them, you know Paul kept bringing out certain precepts, like how we do Habakkuk 2 and 18, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 4, telling our people to what? Take off them crosses, stop worshiping that cobblestone. Stop worshiping your job. Stop worshiping money. Read this, Ah. Baruch chapter 6, verse 7. For as a scarecrow in a garden of custom of cucumbers keepeth nothing, so are their gods of wood and laid over with silver and gold. So the gods that are laid over with silver and gold, they keep it nothing. Meaning what? That cross that you're wearing, it cannot save you. It cannot bring you salvation. Baruch 6 and 70. Jump down to verse 73. Verse 72. Verse 72. Get straight to the point. And ye shall know them to be no gods by the bright purple that rideth upon them. Even sometimes, guess what? A lot of times, a lot of people wearing fake jewelry that rideth upon them. Read on up. And they themselves afterwards shall be eaten and shall be a reproach in the, in the country. Uh huh. Read verse 73 is the point. Better therefore is the just man that hath none idol. Read on. Well, he shall be far from reproach. So guess what? You shouldn't have no idols because you will be far from reproach. Meaning what? Correction. Let's go back to Acts chapter 17, verse 30. We're going to kind of go through these last little parts. I ain't getting there with me, brothers and sisters. I want to cover this. The book of Acts chapter 17, verse 30. And the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. To what? To repent. To repent. Jump down to verse 18 and 1. Acts 18 and 1. After these things, Paul departed from Athens, Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aqu Aquila, born in Pontus. So he left Athens, now he's going to Corinth. And he found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy. So even going back to Acts chapter 10 with Cornelius, Guess what? Even if he was an Italian band, even if he did stay in Italy, that doesn't mean that he's an Italian. Even just by this. Read that again, verse 2. I verse 2. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, uh -huh. with his wife Priscilla, because, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome. And this is during the time of Claudius Caesar, when they was, what, expelling the Jews from Rome. Meaning what? They was we was about to overrun that thing. Teaching our understanding. We weren't going with the doctrines that they was teaching anymore. Now they have to expel us. No, get up. Some of the ones that didn't leave, they what? They put in slavery. This thing was happening all over again. Jump down to verse nineteen. Give me nineteen or more. Acts chapter nineteen, verse one. And it came to pass. Hold on, hold up. Give me Acts. You already know. Uh, 18 and verse 18. Because we want to show that, guess what? Paul was keeping the commandments as well. That's right. Acts chapter 18, verse 18. I like it, brothers and sisters. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren, uh -huh. and sailed thence into Syria, 
and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn having shorn his head in Caesarea. Uh huh. For he had for he had a vow. What vow did Paul have? What Nazarite. vow? The Nazarite vow. vow. The Nazarite vow, man. So y'all make sure y'all put Numbers chapter sixteen, verse thirteen. So they keep saying Paul not keeping the laws. Yes, Paul was keeping the laws. Our people is, hey, read verse 19. Huh? Verse 19. And he came to Ephesus and left them there. But he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. So guess what? He constantly going in the synagogues, reasoning with the Jews. Jump down to chapter 19, verse 1. Chapter 19, verse 1. And it came to pass. That while Apollos was at was was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Read on. And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And that's similar to what we're doing today. We're literally breaking down and giving our people the true Holy Ghost because they think it's when you shake it. No. The true Holy Ghost is what Acts 7 and 51. Second Ezra chapter what? 14 verse 22. The laws of God. That's what the Holy Ghost is. Read on. Verse, verse 3. three. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. They said unto John's baptism. Read on. Then said Paul, John really baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people they, that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ. Give me Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4 real quick. We're going to show you that it's only one baptism. The book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. Read on. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One what? One baptism. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 4 and 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Now, which one do you think it is? John the Christ. It's Christ. Christ taught us to what? Be washed by the water with the word. That's what true baptism is. Let's go back. Chapter, I mean, Acts chapter 19 and verse. Read four again. Yeah, read 4 again. Verse 4. Then said Paul, John really baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ. Read on. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord. No, when they were dunked in water. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord. So that, that's how you truly get baptized, by hearing the word and applying it to your everyday life. Give me, jump down to verse 21. No, give me verse 19. It's like, no, we got to touch on that. For brothers and sisters that love to go into these different books, read this. Right. Acts 19 and 19. Many of them also which used curious arts. Going into witchcraft. Read on. Brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. Because you have brothers and sisters, hey, sisters mainly going into the witchcraft, but then you have the brothers that love to be so deep. Buying all these books that don't filter through the Bible. Make sure when you're getting these books that they filter through the Bible. Like we say, we got the book of Josephus. We got uh, Lost Trials and Promised Land. Guess what? We bring the things out that filter through the scriptures. We don't believe everything in the book of Josephus. We use it for historical purpose, him going into detailed accounts, him being a primary source, meaning what? An eyewitness to many accounts. Read verse 20 out. Verse 20. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. It says, but they burned those things. They cast all those things off. I forgot that point. They burned those things. Also referencing what? Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 12. You know, be curious, making many books, there is no end. Meaning, because Esau is always writing a book to guess what? Take you away from the Bible. This is the book that you really need to be in tune with. 
Jump down to verse 21. Verse 21. After these things were ended, Paul pr proposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia uh -huh. and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have I have been there, I must also see Rome. Jump down to verse 33. But this is another point we kind of want to touch on real quick. Acts 19 and 33. Uh-huh. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward. And Alexander beckoned with the hand and would have made his defense unto the people. So this crowd came unto Paul and to Alexander. And they caught Alexander and pressed upon him. So he beckoned with the hand, meaning what? Get back. Read on. Verse 34. Verse 34. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all his all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. So guess what? They're trying to come at him with what? Greek philosophy and so forth. So we know that Alexander was bugged by these things. A lot of times they let brothers know you got to have courage in this thing. You can't have no fear when brothers are faced with guess what? Questions are pressed hard upon because what happened to Alexander later on give me first Timothy chapter 1 verse 20 let's see we can kind of see that guess what this probably affected him in some way meaning what he went through some trials and he wasn't able to endure in this thing First Timothy chapter 1 verse 20 of whom is Hamanias and Alexander whom I have delivered unto Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme that they may what uh, that they may learn not to blaspheme so we see in Acts he was with Paul but we see in what in first Timothy chapter 1 verse 10 that guess what he probably was shaking in his faith even dealing with that situation read verse 20 again first Timothy 1 and 20 of whom is Hymenaeus, 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 and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. So even Paul is saying he delivered Alexander unto Satan, man. Meaning, meaning what? Eventually he fell and left the truth, man. So you literally have brothers that walk with Paul that guess what? Left the truth. We see many brothers and sisters do that today. That's why we say it's nothing new under the sun, man. Nothing at all. Jump over to 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 9. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 9. So you have brothers that walk with Paul that guess what? That are no longer in the truth. So we always tell brothers, look at look to your next man. You may not see him. You know, you just don't want to be the ones that's not seen. Two, three years later. Hey, you see some of the brothers that come and go? You see some of the sisters that come and go? Read this. I 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 9. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. But the mass had forsaken For Demas. For Demas had forsaken me, having loved this present world. Having what? I loved this present world. Because in the book of Philippians 1 and 24, we see that Demas was in the truth. But now her, and that's how you can what? Put your books in order as well, letting you know what books came with, with the one before what. Read verse 10 again. Verse 10 For demons have forsaken me, having loved this present world. Having loved this present world. Read on. And is departing unto Thessalonica. Uh huh. Priest to Galatia. Uh huh. Titus unto Dalmatia. Dalmatia. Uh huh. Only Luke is with me. Only what? Only Luke is with me. Luke was with Paul. So I know a lot of times they talk about the book of Luke. I mean, hey, this was a righteous brother, man. Give you an account, a second-hand account, or an eyewitness account. Read on. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with me. So we see Mark putting in work in this truth. Read on. We is profitable to me for the ministry. Read on. Tychus and Tychus, having a set. Have I sent to Ephesus? So he sent brothers. You made brothers that may be going places. I know Captain Jerobal went to what? Arkansas to get up with our brother from the Memphis battle axe. Read on. The cloak that I have left 
and swords with papers which thou comest bring with thee uh -huh. and the books and the what and the book read on huh? but especially the parchment the parchment is what scrolls was written on unlike animal skin and so forth so you know when you're dealing working the truth you may stay with a brother you may leave your books there this is the same thing hey bring them books back with you bro when i see you again bring my cloak back man give me my my shirt my friends talking about the bad one yeah i need that back bro read on 14 alexander the coppersmith did me much evil read on the lord reward him according to his work read that again huh? alexander the coppersmith did me much evil the Lord reward him according to his work. Reward him according to his work, meaning what? He eventually left, man. Read on. Of whom be thou, where also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. Read that part again. Huh? Of whom be thou, where also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. Meaning what? Paul was probably giving counsel, and the brother didn't take it, and withstood his word. Man, them niggas don't know what they talking about. Them niggas over there wicked. Well, then guess what? Prove all things. Mm -hmm. The righteous stand bold as a lion. You're not going to run and not answer the phone when brothers is calling. Like, stop playing the games, man. For real. And that's what Paul was saying. He said, be thou aware. What he's telling them? To beware of Alexander. Like that brother now, he going out. Beware of him. Right. So when we see brothers and sisters go off, guess what? We got to tell brothers and sisters one and the same. Beware of them. Because guess what? When the person got their satanic spirit or the devil spirit, what would they what does what does Satan do? Walk to see whom they may devour, if they can pull you too. Right? Go ahead, uh. Let's go back to let's go to Acts chapter twenty-three, verse two. We're coming to an end, cut this thing a little short, just a little bit. Acts twenty-three, start at verse two. Which one? Okay. Acts 23 verse 2 uh -huh. And the high priest and the knights commanded them that, that, that stood by him to smite him on the mouth So this, <coughs> this is where they had taken Paul And was bringing him up on council For the things that he was teaching and the work he was doing Read on Then said Paul unto him Thou shalt smite thee Thou witted wall Thou whited wall was sitteth thou to judge me after the law? Read on. And commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law. Read on. And they that stood by said, Revilest the gods, high priest. It says, Revilest thy gods, high priest. So they trying to do what? Catch Paul up in what? Breaking a law. Do any brother know what his law is at? We just brought it out like last week. He said, brother's got to be in tune with that thing, man. Literally going back over these videos, meditating on these things, because it's always something that you can use. Read verse 5. Uh. Verse 5. Then said Paul, I wish not, brother, that he was the high priest, for it is written, thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of the people. Of thy people. Of thy people. Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. Give me Exodus chapter 22, verse 28. Brother's got to know this thing, man. Had that thing, I'm telling y'all, man, the best thing to do is to have that thing squeezed up in there somewhere, man. Because, brothers, I'm going to tell y'all, brothers have been trying it their ways and it ain't been working. Why not try it the captain's ways, man? It ain't been working. We had some brothers, they can't call certain precepts we know they should have. Why not try it that way, man? What, what's, what's it going to hurt? Read that out. Exodus 22 and 28. Thou shalt not revile the gods, nor curse the ruler of thy people. So even Paul knew he was doing what? Quoting the law. Ananias smit him on the cheek, man. He slapped him, trying to get him to go uh, fall out of the spirit. But guess what? Brother Paul stayed in the spirit, man. And that's why he said, Then said Paul unto him, God shall smite thee. That we always say, let the Most High God deal with that thing. Brothers out of order, let the Most High God deal with it. Sisters out of order. Hey, let the Most High God deal with it. He said, God shall smite thee, thou whited wall, for thou sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law. Let me say, you literally up here, you talk, you trying to teach the laws, but you literally up here breaking the laws. What scripture say to hit me, man? 
because I didn't say something you didn't like. Then he tried to get him out of spirit. Then Paul said, and then they stood by, revilest thou God's high priest, trying to catch him up. And Paul like, no, he just quoted the law. No, I don't revile thy gods, meaning the judges of our people. What you got, Brother Booker? 22 and verse 28. Exodus 22 and 28. A law about reviling the gods or the leaders over your camp. Give me um, Sirach chapter 34 and verse 9. And with that. The book of Sirach chapter 34, verse 9. A man that had traveled knoweth many things. So even with Brother Paul, man, we know he traveled all over Asia Minor. He knew it many things because you what you encountered many different peoples of different walks. Encountering their philosophy, how they think, even when brothers and sisters that went to college. How many brothers and sisters went to college? You found out brothers and sisters from Louisiana, like damn, it's like a whole nother damn world. Brothers from Florida, brothers from Chicago. Brothers from California, they do things totally different from what we do in Texas. Read on up. 34 and 9. A man that had traveled knoweth many things. Read on. And he that had much experience will declare wisdom. So the experience that you encountered among being around different people, you encounter or you gain much wisdom. You know how to deal with these brothers from New York. They mainly about some philosophies and chemistry. My brother, down south, they mainly about what? Baptism and Christianity. These people over here on this particular type of philosophy. Read on. He that had no experience, nor little. Read that again. Uh, he that had no experience, nor little. Meaning what? Experience and travel. Meaning experience, period. Read on. But he that had traveled is full of prudence. But he that is tra that is, that traveled is full of prudence. Meaning you always look into the future. That's what prudent means. Read on. When I traveled, I saw many things. Read that again. Uh. When I traveled, I saw many things. Read on. And I understand more than I can express. Man, you can tell even with Brother Paul, even continuing on, we have to do a part two eventually. He seen so many things that he couldn't express. Read on. I was all time in danger of death. And guess what? We read about that. When you read in the book of 2 Corinthians 11 and 26 on down, he was often in debt. When you read in Acts 28, you see that he was bitten by a snake. He was shipwrecked, stoned, beaten, gave him 40 lashes. Read on. Yet I was delivered because of these things. But yet he was delivered from because he believed, man. Read on. The spirit of those that fear the Lord shall live. Read that again. Huh? The spirit of those that fear the Lord shall live. Read on. For their hope is in him that saveth them. Read on. Whoso feared the Lord shall not fear nor be afraid. For he is... is for he is his hope. So we don't want to be afraid when we have to go out and guess what? Do the work. Wives, don't be afraid for your husbands, man. We get prayed up. Hey, fast. Throw a fast up before brothers. Do what you have to do to be strengthened in this ministry. Because it may be many times brothers may have to leave wives and go and do the work. Leave their families. Leave their church. We have to do the work. Remember, we got to put the Lord's work over everything. So don't feel no type of way in these things when it's time to do the Lord. If you can't do it, I mean, hey. But if you can, all by all means, do the work. Read on. Verse 16. For the eyes of the Lord are upon them that love him. Uh, read verse 15. Verse 15. Blessed is the soul of him that feareth the Lord. To whom doth he look? To whom doth he look, meaning the Lord. Read on. And who is his strength? And who is his strength in what? In us doing this work. With that, we say shalom. Shalom. We always tell brothers and sisters to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Share the videos. Like the videos, brothers and sisters. Help us push this truth to brothers and sisters that's in the class. Share these videos. Like we say, when it's your opportunity to come up and start teaching, hey, you don't want to just start sharing the videos then. That's a vain glory type mentality, man. Because like we say, you never know who's on your feed that's going to get this truth, man.
don't be afraid to share. Well, what is Esau going to do to you except suspend your damn Facebook page? Unless you got something else going on. Give me Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 4 again. Like we say, we have to learn to shake idolatry. I always say, keep God's law, statutes, and commandments, so we always like to end with a law. Remember, brothers and sisters, we got tabernacles coming up. Brothers and sisters, that's online. Reach out to us. Our family. I know it will be August the 9th through the 16th, 17th, but we'll be going out there the 13th, 14th. I mean, October. It's like October. I'm ready for it to be now. Yeah, for real. Let's go. October 13th, 14th, 15th, and the 16th. All praise to the Most High. We'll be out there uh, four days this year. Uh -huh. Brothers and sisters will be out there even more. You get there, read that. Uh. Leviticus 19 and 4. Turn ye not unto idols. Read that again. Uh. Turn ye not unto idols. So this is a, a law telling our people, turn ye not unto idols. An idol can be anything. Anything that you're putting over the Most High God. You know, yourself, your wife, your children, your job, stopping you from doing the work of the Most High God. We cannot go into idolatry. Taking off those crosses. Stop worshiping that cobblestone, brothers that's in Islam. These things go into idolatry. So if brothers and sisters are dealing in those things, lust, sexual desires, anything can go into idolatry. If you're dealing in those things, get out of those things. Shake those things from your spirit, man, and turn back and repent. Come back to the law, statutes, and commandments. 